So I've been asked multiple times how to put in animated steering wheels and gears and all that sort of stuff. And I've been putting it off for one particular reason. It is incredibly complex. This is probably one of the hardest mods you can do to your automation vehicle. Though dual axle is still pretty difficult. But I suppose I'll jump into it. And we'll use this as the previous example. And put it on this car, which is given to me and asked if I could do it for them. So I thought, you know what, I'll take this opportunity and I'll actually finally do it. Now there's a whole bunch of timestamps and we'll be going through it. But you will need Blender and probably the ability to use Blender. If you have experience though with 3ds Max, you can go ahead and use that if you so please. Then you'll also need some sort of code editor. You can use Notepad++, which is fairly lightweight and fairly simple, but I get more complicated. So I personally use Microsoft Visual Studio. So, I mean, whichever one suits your fancy, you can use Notepad, just generic old Notepad, but I very much strongly suggest it because you can only undo one step and then you're kind of screwed. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to unpack this mod. Oh, this is, this is gonna be so long. But let's start anyway. So we're gonna find the mod, which is right here. Gonna open it up and just ignore this showroom's tool unpack that now if you go to your mods folder you've got all your mods in here but then you've got an unpacked folder here and then you've got the new thing that you've unpacked you can go into it go into vehicles go into that and then you've got all of this stuff and you're going to find the dot dae file which is right there for me now you can open this up in notepad but we're going to open it up in blender and what we're going to do when we get into blender is we're going to take our steering wheel which was normally a part of the car model and we're going to separate it and then zero it out which is going to take time. This is not a short process, it is long and tedious. Now, with a brand new thing open, we're gonna have down here our little bit of display, so if I forget anything, you could just look down here to see what key presses I'm doing. But generally, it'd be better if you did have an understanding of how Blender works or whatever 3D software you're using, because this is gonna go quite quick because I'm not gonna explain everything to you here. This is, once again, not a beginner tutorial. So we're gonna press A, we're gonna delete all of that. We're gonna go F4, import DAE. Now we're going to find where we have that car unpacked. The way I do it really cheatily is I just have the thing open here, control C on that, go here, control V on that and done. There we go, already found it, done. Now this could take a really long time. It used to take me about 20 minutes, but then I reinstalled Windows like probably six months ago and it made it a lot faster. Now, all of this does not matter except for the gauges, which we're also going to work with, but this time around, we're going to do just the steering wheel. So we're gonna select that, control I to invert, select everything else instead, then press delete, because we don't care about anything. Now we've just got the body, which is where the steering wheel is. Now we're going to go into it by pressing tab, and we're gonna to try to select just the steering wheel now, and then we're gonna invert the selection. Now we don't need the steering column and all that sort of stuff, because that's not going to rotate with it. All we're going to move is just the steering wheel. So we're gonna try to select bit here and there and then hit control L and just keep working away until everything's selected if you need to you can then go to this which becomes a little bit problematic but because this is a convertible we can look at it this way and then we have so much easier selection you know what actually hold on this has got a whole bunch of loose geometry as well so this is another little tip that you can use you can go select Select all by trait and then loose geometry and just hit delete on all of those empty vertices. That will make the file a little bit smaller and work a little bit easier in BeamNG, but not really noticeably. So don't expect much from that. I should also mention one other thing is please to God, don't try to do this mod unless you've got a car with a relatively short name. This one's probably on the limit of length. The longer your name is, the more problematic it's going to become when we're working with material names and it's going to end up just exporting with a whole bunch of that orange no texture sort of texture which is bad so keep short names if you're doing this now we're going to go in and we're going to select as much as possible holding down shift selecting everything occasionally hitting Control l to make sure that we got as much as we need to select now, do we have everything selected? You know what, screw it. Let's just make this a whole lot easier for ourselves. We're getting rid of everything else anyway. We're just gonna go there, delete that. Vertices, and we're gonna delete everything back here. Delete vertices, hit numpad seven, rotate around, select all of that, hit delete. Select that, hit delete. There we go. 
I should have started let off with that, honestly. <laughs> and there we go. We've isolated the steering wheel. That was so much easier. Now, let's go back to our normal view. And now we're going to have to make this as horizontal as possible. Now, when in automation, you could actually just set this as horizontal, all that sort of stuff. It would make your life easier in the long run. But... This is generally how I do it, because I'm a glutton for punishment, maybe? I don't know. So we're gonna hit three on this, A, to select everything. Move it down to origin center. We're gonna try to make this as centered as possible, and also rotate this to be as vertical as possible. Luckily, there's a bit of a grid there, so we can also just move things around, try to get it quite close. That should do it. One on the numpad, we'll move you around to this view, and then we're gonna try to center it. Now, luckily the steering wheel has a perfect little dot right in the middle, and this is our center of origin, because I haven't moved the 3D cursor at all. So we're just gonna hit G, and we're gonna move this into place. And that's about as good as we really need it to be. It'll be really hard to notice when we're working in such fine details. And let's just have one last look at its verticalness. It looks fairly good, so I suppose that's as much as we can hope for. Now, pressing tab back to object mode, we're gonna rename this to whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna go steering underscore wheel. Now you don't have to use underscores, you can just uh, do whatever. Just don't have spaces. If you need a space, put an underscore instead. And that's for pretty much anything that we're doing currently. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit F4, we're gonna export DAE. Then over here under recent, we'll see that it's here. And we're just gonna name this just the steering underscore wheel. As a good rule of thumb, just never have spaces in any of these things. Then export collada. Done. Now, we're not gonna delete this and re-import the DAE. What we are going to do is we're gonna go file new. Because if we try to just import the car again, it's going to cause issues with materials. So we're gonna avoid that entirely. So we're just gonna go here, we're gonna delete everything to start with, then import DAE, go with the main car body. And when the J-beam calls this car body to be drawn in beam NG, it looks at all of the DAEs and then looks at all of the names of the objects in the thing. So currently, when it's calling the car body with the steering wheel baked in place, which we don't want, it's going to call this. Unfortunately, that's going to have the steering wheel already baked in there, but we want to have our steering wheel in there. So we're going to have to edit this now. So control I, inverts the selection, press delete. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to now select that steering wheel and everything and just delete the steering wheel out of this. So that whole avoiding everything previously, yeah, we're, we're still going to have to do that. My brain don't work too good. I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and select all of that. Then we're going to deselect what's above and anything that's below. And we've got mostly just the steering wheel selected, I believe. Control L, nice. Hit delete on that. And the only bit left is this little doohickey. Easy, there we go. Just go in, select, control L, and delete. Now, if we just export this back as the original DAE, it's going to unfortunately then get rid of everything else. So we're gonna export this as a separate DAE again, and this is gonna be a different car body. Unfortunately, because we haven't changed the name yet, it's going to go, wait, hold on, which car body we draw upon? And it can cause issues. So instead of that, we're going to go ahead and we're just gonna rename this. So you can rename it any way you want. I'm just gonna change that zero to a one, just to keep things quite simple. Then F4, export DAE. Then I'm gonna bring it in here and we're just gonna call it car underscore body, doesn't matter what you call it. Now, if we open up the J-beam for this car now, we're gonna go down to where it has flex bodies. And this has a lot of fixtures, oh my God. But the only fixture that we really care about is car body. We're gonna change that to car body one. Now when it's looking at all of the DAEs, it's going to be calling upon this one and not car body zero, which is still in the original file because we haven't gotten rid of the original file yet. We're gonna hit control S, go back to here and hit control R. And this takes a lot of loading. Poop, there it goes. Now we no longer have a steering wheel. Isn't that fantastic? Now this is where it starts to get hard. We're gonna start going into adding things into files and there's Basically, two main things we need to add. One is nodes, and then the other one is a prop which calls upon the nodes and calls upon the new prop that we put in. Yeah, so... <laughs> I don't... 
I don't want to do this tutorial anymore. It's, it's already too hard. I hate it. So we've got all of our nodes here. This is just the body nodes, by the way. And you'll see here that we've got nodes. And this is the starting of the node section. Then we've got the ID of the node, which will be like A0. Then you've got position X, which is the first one, which is the width from the center of the car. If you're like a... This would be positive and this would be negative, I think, or something like that. So the more you have out from the center, that's what that one is. Then you've got position Y, which is how far forward. And this gets a little bit tricky because it's actually inverse. The more positive the number, the more backwards it goes. The more negative the number, the more forwards it goes. Don't ask me, that's just the way they have it. Then position Z, which is this one right here, which is how vertical it is. And luckily it's just very simple. The more vertical it is, the bigger the number. Then under here, we got what sort of friction it has, what it's made out of, so it knows what noises to make and stuff like that. Whether it has collision with other things uh, is set to true and that's how you want it to be. Then under group, we've got car body. Now, if you go back up to car body, you'll see that chassis and the body itself are both under the car body. So now flex bodies are saying, hey, we've got this thing that you want to be able to see and we're going to give it a group name of car body. Then car body is given nodes. So all of these have nodes and you got self collision true so they can collide with themselves. So like the tire will bounce off of the car sort of things. Then it's got like groups of nodes. This is generally very accurate. And then those groups of nodes will be given weights, which is how it gives weight distribution to your car. But if we keep going down, we're gonna find Here's one now for engine, group engine. And if you look up, you'll see that the engine here, which is always misnamed, that's just the way automation does it because I'm assuming simplicity's sake, it's got the group type engine. And then the engine is called here self collisions false. And you've got all of your engine nodes of which there is eight of them. Even though it says seven, you've actually got a zero here. And that just creates the perfect cube for it. Similar thing with the gearbox, except it's still called under this. And the engine zero to engine seven are all just the names of the nodes themselves. These can actually be called anything. It does not matter what the name of it is, as long as the name corresponds with the other beans and everything, if you're creating things. Then you've also got exhaust, you've got things like fixture number plates, mirrors, grills, 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 grills. Oh my God, they've got a lot of things in here, Jesus. So we're just gonna go to the bottom of nodes. And then nodes is capped off with this bracket and comma right here. Then starts beans. But we're now in the node section and I've just pasted in this little bit here. Now, keep in mind, for some reason in this software, I don't know if it's the way I've set it up. If I hit control V to paste that in, everything changes its formatting a little bit. So I hit control Z once and it returns the formatting to what it was before I pasted in, but keeps in the pasted bit. If I hit control Z, then it'll entirely go away. Now, this is just a little group that I created myself based upon what I've seen on the main traditional parts of the car body. We just got a name here to name it steering. You don't need to put that there. You've got group, this is under group for steering, node weight, which you can put it whatever, I just got it set to one so then it's fairly uniform, then steering zero, then steering one, then steering two. Ah, <sighs> okay, let me explain. This is my car. If we hit control T, you can see that the collision mesh is much bigger and based upon a different car, but that was just because the collision mesh for this was so messy that I just went screw it and I grabbed some other collision mesh. But in here, little bit hard to see, but we got ST1, ST0, and down here is ST2. So yeah, it's a little complicated, but it, you'll start to understand. What we've got here is the pivot line from ST0 to ST2, and then kind of like a sideways anchor point, so it knows on which way to rotate, which would be ST1 over here. Com complicated en enough for it? Yeah, okay. You'll see here that ST0 and ST1 have both the same forward position and both the same height position. That's just to make this a little bit easier on us. Then ST2 is wherever you want it to basically be pointing towards. Now, if we go ahead and save this, Control S, and go back over to this car, we'll hit Control N to see our nodes, and hit Control R. You'll see the nodes pop up and then you just saw them fall down really quickly yeah they're gone then that's because we yet haven't made beams to make them connect to anything else <sighs> so as i said this is not a beginner mod so yeah troubleshooting skills is something that is very important for this if you don't know how to troubleshoot uh learn how to troubleshoot on your own. But if you have learned how to troubleshoot and there's still things that are troubling you, you can put questions in the description. Just check other people's questions first because after a while, I'm assuming that the comments section will be filled 
filled to the brim with questions. So now we've got beams, and this is a little bit simpler. We've got the new category called beams. It starts with a bracket and then ends similarly with a bracket like that at the end, but like, you know, down here. Then we've got ID one and ID two. And what that's saying is we got ID one of a node and ID two of a node, and then it creates a beam in between them. The beam strength is set to FLT max, which just means that the strength of this will not break. These are the sorts of beams that won't. There are beams that do break, but we're not creating them right now. The beam deform means how much it can resist deformation under a collision or something like that. The beam spring is how springy it will return to its point of origin. And the beam dampener is what stops it from like constantly going in a springing motion. It works like a car's dampener by slowing down the springiness of the beam until it reaches zero. And as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of beams here, and then it creates a different sort of beam spring and dampener, and then it does a few more and it keeps going down and it keeps going down we're gonna move beyond the body part we'll get there eventually and just in about here it doesn't really particularly matter we're gonna hit enter a few times and we're gonna create our own beams now here's some that I prepared earlier <laughs> uh, so what we've got here is got st0 ST1 and ST2. These are our steering nodes that we put in. We've just got them randomly kind of connected to nodes that I know happen to be somewhere in the middle and these ones are down towards the front. You can just go ahead and copy this as is. It doesn't really particularly matter as long as they are strongly connected to other beams. Then what we're gonna do is hit Control S. Then we're gonna Alt Tab back to the car and hit Control R. And if you've done it right, you'll see the steering nodes in somewhere. I can't see them! Oh wait, they're up here. ST0 and ST1. <laughs> they are really tall. We're gonna have to actually align those though. They can't just be willy-nilly anywhere. So we're gonna try to align ST0 to be right at the center there. So if we go sideways, we could see that it's back further than A47. So if we search for A47, its forward position is 0.27. And this is gonna take a little bit of time, just control Sing, waiting for this to refresh, then hitting control R, and we can see now that we've moved it the wrong way. I forgot. More positive means more backwards. So let's just try initially just negativing those out because there is like a middle point in which it goes around. So we're gonna line up here, control R, and now they've moved too far all the way over to here. Make that point two for now. And we've done a fairly good job. We can edit this a little bit later if we need to. We've got ST0 basically right in the middle of the steering column where the base of the steering wheel would sit. And we've got ST1 over here. Now we need to do is line up ST2. And this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated because we can't just look at it right now. We're gonna have to look at it a little bit later. Otherwise things are going to go out just a little bit wonky. Now as payment for this uh, video, I'd like to request one thing from you. If you're not subscribed, please check out my other content and consider subscribing if it is the sort of stuff you like. I mean, at least in the future, there will be more tutorials like this one. Now for the next part, and this is basically the crux of everything. These things, like the dials, yeah, headlights as well, all that sort of stuff come under the banner of props. Now because I had the whole steering wheel a part of the previous cars thing, uh, I didn't have the prop set up in the main J-beam. I actually had it set up in the suspension area. So then you can see here that the steering wheel doesn't just stay with a thing with the body. It moved with the suspension itself. So it could call upon the suspension nodes easier. This time, however, we don't need to do that, but this is gonna be a new ground for me. We've got here just the regular old props, but this is making light props, and we're going to not do light props, but a different sort of prop instead. So we're gonna create a little bit of a gap here. Now, I've never done it this way, but this is how we're gonna do it now. We're gonna paste in here our props code, and you can see here that it's just screwed up all of the formatting for everything. We're gonna hit Control Z, which brings it back into alignment, and then we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. Now, this is called steering. That is the function of it. Then the mesh, we're not going to call it steering column. That's what I had it on the previous vehicle. It's gonna be calling on steering wheel. So we can go ahead and just copy this name however you wanna do it. And in here, we're gonna hit Control V. Oh, it's done that again, hit Control Z. And there we go. It's calling now upon steering wheel. It's got steering zero, steering one, and steering two. Next, we're gonna go ahead and have a look at the rest of these. Now I've not 
tried to do much else other than a rotating uh, prop shaft fan thing there, a uh, prop shaft out to a gear here, which doesn't work like perfectly, but uh, I mean, I didn't bother figuring it out, or just steering. So I don't know how to do gauges, but for now, it's gonna be knowing that these uh, things you know what? I don't really know what a lot of this does. It has been a very long time. When did I release that video? Wow. Five months ago. So yeah, it, my memory is not that good. So we'll go over this later, I suppose. If you do want to have a look at uh, doing more complicated sort of things, you can also get drive shafts under the prop section to animate whilst driving. Just look up in Google props and then whatever it is that you're trying to look for and you'll find all of the information you want. Now, control S on that and then we're gonna hit control R and Bazingo Zongo, look at that, perfect. There is nothing wrong with the steering wheel, stop looking at it. All right, you know what? Yes, fine, it's upside down. But look at that! It steers and everything! Woohoo! Yay! We'll figure out the uh, wrong rotation uh, shortly. Right now, you can see that this doesn't line up properly, and that's because A2 is too high. We need to drop A2 down a little bit. So we're gonna look at this side on, and then we've got the verticality uh, part of the node. We're just gonna drop that down a bit to zero. 0.9 and control R back here and you can see that it's rotated again. Yes! That is perfecta mundo. We're just noticing now that it's off a little bit, so I'd rather it come back. There's two ways of doing that. One, we can move these nodes, or two, you see this? We could actually go into here, hit A for everything, and then just press G to start moving it, and then lock it onto the Y coordinate, and we could just move it forwards. And that will then move it forwards for us. And that is, trust me, so much easier. How much further forward do we need to move it? Only just a little bit though. So we're just gonna grab that. We're gonna hit G and then lock it to the Y corner and just move it forwards. Probably about that much is enough. Then F4, export, DAE, find our way back and hit steering wheel. Now, this you don't have to hit control R for, it'll update on its own. And the game will go ahead and crash. Oh no, there we go, and it's good. So now we've fixed that issue. But I'm noticing now that it's angled down a little bit, so we have to lift ST2 up a little bit. Hit Control R on that, and we'll just see how this gap closes up. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Okay, well, maybe not perfect. If you have a look from top, we can see that there's a little bit of an alignment issue. Is there? I don't know. Let's just make it upside down for now. Base rotation, I think. Let's set that to zero. Well, that was the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe set this one to zero. Has that fixed our rotation issue? Maybe. I think so. Try putting this to 180. That has gone the wrong way. <laughs> That's... Yeah, not quite how I wanted this to be. Let's turn that to 180. There we go. Now the steering wheel is up the right way and we can see that we get full steering. Now, you can actually change the limitations of how much this will steer. And it does steer a bit too much. Like that's a lot of steering that you're gonna have to do. Your arm's gonna be really tired. So one of these will change that. Uh, I believe it's this one. Minimum, maximum, and offset, I think. Really? No. Yes, it is. Uh, ignore base translation for now. That's if you need to move things independently. So you'll just ignore that one. So I think if we make this 0.5, save that, come back to here and control R, and now we steer considerably less. So you can fiddle with that and get that working the way that you want it to. For now, that's all that. Control and cycle through to get rid of all of these nodes. And yeah, you have yourself a steering wheel. Yay, good for you. Now to do the gauge. I personally have never done a gauge, but let's figure that one out together, I suppose. I don't know, I believe there is a way to do a digital gauge, but we're just gonna go with the RPM for now. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go file, we're gonna go, hold on, new, no, general, don't save. You, you don't bother saving those uh, dot blend files. A, delete all, F4, import, DAE, and the whole car body. And now just the car body that it is that we're calling upon, you know, body one. We're not gonna export this as it is, but we're going to start working on this one in particular. So we're gonna hit tab, and we're just gonna delete everything else around this gauge section. So we're gonna select that, control I, delete, and we're gonna try to dig out of there what we need. And we're starting to notice one little problem here. This needle doesn't reach the middle. I suppose that doesn't really matter. 
because we're not actually going to keep this in this position or this configuration. We're going to cheat just a smidgen. We're going to go over to materials now and on face select, I'm going to select that one. I'm going to go select on that. And now we've got that easily selected. Control I to invert the selection and delete those vertices. We now have our dial. Yay! Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way and not just creating a new dial ticker itself is for one, very simply, it's got already the materials set there for what we want. And let's just move it into place. Gee, let's move it down to here. And we're just gonna line it up like that. So then that way, when it's going, it'll have a center point out here. Just make it get a little easier for us. Now, this one's gonna be a lot more complicated because this is a very accurately placed part. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rename this as RPM underscore dial then f4 export dae move it to the place rpm dial now we're going to go ahead and go with a new one again you do not want to just re-import don't save import dae and just bring in that car body again now if we were smart we would know what material it is that we want Unfortunately, we're not, and I forgot already. So we're gonna have to dig deep and just work our way into this dial area. We'll, we'll get it. Oh, I think I see it. Nope, no, I don't. Ah, I see it now. Go ahead, select that, and then hit select. Oh, there's other things that share that same material name. So be careful about that. We're gonna go ahead and just make sure that only that is selected. Hopefully, we don't miss anything. Now that that's the only thing selected, we're gonna go ahead, once again, just delete it. Then tab back to object mode, export DAE, and we're gonna re-export this as the car body. Now if we come back here, it'll take a second to update, and on its own, poof, it's gone. Now we have to edit it back in. I think I'm just gonna grab the existing nodes and move them. So we're gonna go ahead and select this, control C, uh, make a gap in here, Control V, Control Z, and this is now going to be RPM. And this one is also going to be named RPM. We're going to call these RPM, RPM, and RPM. So we have RPM 0, RPM 1, and RPM 2. I'm just going to move them forwards a little bit for now. Or at least RPM 0 and RPM 1. I'm just going to move that to 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. Now we're going to take this section and duplicate that. Control C, Control V, and we're going to call these RPM. Good. If we hit Control R, Control N, we'll see that we now have RPM stuff, but we should move that forwards uh, eventually. Then we're going to go up and we're going to find where we made, here we go, steering. So this one is now going to be changed to an RPM one. But because I don't know how to do that, this is how you troubleshoot. Beam NG props. Then we got vehicle model props. Wiki BMNG props. And here we've got a whole bunch of information relating to how props work. And look at that, perfectly, we've already got RPM set up. Nice! We will have to play with this a little bit. For now, we're just gonna grab that and just under here, we're gonna create a new line and paste it in. Now, this is not what we're calling upon. What we're gonna be calling upon is the dial. So we're gonna grab the name of it and that's going to go in there. And hey presto, I'm also gonna rename our things to RPM zero, RPM one, and RPM two. Hit Control S on that, bring it over to Beam NG, wait for it to refresh and hit Control R. We now somewhere should have a dial, I think. Maybe. I can't find the dial. I remember specifically that for some reason, base translation was fixing a lot of errors. So we're gonna grab that. We're gonna put it in here. Hey, look at that. It's already fixed it, except it's the wrong way. <laughs> but we're getting so much closer. As you can see, we've already figured out a lot of the issue just by pure troubleshooting, trying things out. And we're also noticing that the RPM dial also stops somewhere around 6,000 RPM and then it doesn't keep going and then we'll come back down after it drops down below there So we're gonna have to fiddle with a bunch of settings for now We're gonna move it a little bit forwards though move that forwards a little bit bring it in control R. this is gonna take a while Oh, and we can see now that it starts at Basically vertical that we can fix just move that forward to point zero six We're getting closer and I think the angle is off a little bit because it uh, comes out here, but then is recessed back there. As you can see, it doesn't stay in front of the dial the entire way. I think we could fix that by raising RPM2, which is the final one. Perfect, now it's behind the glass. Wait, it's poking out a little bit. 
Frick. Well, whatever, good enough. Now we're gonna have to fiddle with some of the details around here. And I believe it's this one. Oh yes, as we can see here, it limits out to 6,000 RPM. But we rev up to 8,500 RPM. Let's see how much it actually revs up to now. Almost 8,500 RPM. So I'm gonna switch this to 85. Nope, that's 50. 85. And even though we'll be rotating the wrong way, let's see if we've got it working now. Yes, it now goes all the way out and you can see it even bouncing off the rev limiter. Perfect. Now we're gonna do is reverse the rotation and get the uh, RPM to start at about here. I believe we go here to negative. That should make it rotate the other direction. No? I fucked it. Hey, I did something right. Okay, what we've done is we've changed the base rot- No, this is not base rotation. Base rotation is the first lot of brackets. The rotation is the second lot of break- Breakets. And this was a negative on here. We changed that to a positive. Just gonna fiddle with this now until we get this to be the right number. So if we remove 0.036 or whatever, what does that change in the rotation here? Okay, it starts over there now. Except it's broken. Really? Okay, well, it seems that that's not the one we want to play with. It does change the rotation, but that's only because it's like multiplying the amount of times it goes around the dial. So that's not what we want either. This is all troubleshooting. Removing the negative, the, removing the negative was the right thing to start with though. Maybe it's offset that we change. Control R? Ah, I think that is where we start, okay. Yeah, so now we just gotta remove like 10,000 RPM, negative. 10,000 RPM. Oh, close. Uh, but that's also like the amount of rotation we're actually getting is wrong as well. And finally, after a lot of fiddling, we've got the idling yeah, fairly right. It's not the most accurate dial. And then we rev out to about 8,500 RPM. We are done. You wanna see the settings? This is what I went with. We've got a little bit of rotation so it lays a little bit flatter inside of the glass because it's not a completely vertical dial. The dial rotation multiplier is set to 0 0.025. The maximum RPM is set to what the engine's maximum RPM is, though that doesn't really particularly matter too much, but you may as well have it. Then we have our RPM offset modifier so then it knows where to start. Now this will just retard or advance the amount of angle is already in it. So basically it's just an offset so then it lines it up where you want it to be. Good, good luck figuring that one out. I found it was better to kind of like gauge how much this should be then once this was a number which I was happy with. So basically from here to here is about 180 degrees and I got that set up right. I found that 180 degrees was about 0 0.025. Then I set the offset which then moved the dial around backwards until it reached here. <sighs> okay! Done! God, if I drive this thing and then find out that this car handles like garbage, I'm gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> Can we do digital gauges? Uh, I don't wanna do digital gauges! Apparently, digital can't be found. Ah, this one has a digital speedometer. Oh, you know what? We'll leave that for another day. That's a little bit beyond the scope. I that That's probably gonna take a lot of learning. Does it even work? Yes, it does. Oh, dear God. For now, let's just take our brand new car for a bit of a drive around. And we can see here we have our RPM gauge and our steering wheel working. I think it handles nicely. I don't know. I do have prepped, uh, prepped race surfaces, so it's a little bit hard to tell what the car is really like. But so far, it seems pretty good. And I do like being able to look at that steering wheel in there. That's pretty cool. Ah, oh, nice. All right, let's uh, take it around the unprepped surface, which is up high. You know what? Still actually, considerably, a large amount of grip. Let's take it onto the infield though and do a little bit of slaloming. Oh, you know what? Very soft suspension. Oh, like smooth suspension, I should say. Quite nice. Okay. Oh, okay. Understeer. We have understeer, but at least we don't have oversteer. We don't even have liftoff oversteer, but we can handbrake it to get it turned around a little bit more. We can fiddle post with this sort of stuff, but for now, I think that's going to do it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been interesting to make. Uh, if you do like this sort of stuff, I would like you to go ahead and subscribe and like if you're not subscribed already and like, just always like, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> because there will be more tutorials in the future. One of which I will be going over how to do the speed gauge and I will be doing fully adjustable suspension in the future. Uh, also, hopefully, adjustable, like, uh, speed-related wings and stuff like that, and air brakes and whatnot. For now, go 
catch you next time. Goodbye. That was anticlimactic. Much better. Yeah. At least we lost the wheel that time.